rejoin the meeting after the recording starts okay so uh, let's just begin i'm presenting my screen also uh, i hope all of you are able to see the screen so in the last class i think we discussed all the answers to uh, uh, the big bag exercises for uh, chapter 1 so uh, everyone please complete this so we'll be asking some questions from the same for your uh, midterm exam let me see if i have the portions one second let me bring up the portions for the midterm exam here you go so for uh, class 8 it will be up to at least page number 14 so this is page number 14 so we'll have full uh, chapter 1 for our uh, midterm so we'll have to uh, study everything given in uh, this chapter 1 it's a very small chapter uh, but there are lots of uh, lots and lots of basic questions uh, that are in here so we'll have to uh, be thorough so even though the line is very simple look at look at the first line it's very simple but it has lots of, lots and lots of information so we'll have to uh, study everything in depth uh, but uh, don't uh, stress about it too much we'll mostly ask uh, some objective type questions which will be easy to answer and we'll ask some theory questions okay so don't uh, uh, stress about anything don't stress about the exam uh, it will be easy and the portions are also very small okay so do does anyone have any questions you want to ask from chapter 1 do you have any questions any doubts no no sir okay then no so, doubt uh, okay no so doubt you, all right everyone so if you go to google classroom if you click on your section and if you go to google classroom i uh, will find a material uh, so you'll find uh, this material icon and in this material icon you have all the answers to the book back questions so you can just uh, use this uh, pdf and you can write the answers so for some questions hints or page numbers will be given uh, so you can just use the same and you can write the answer so those who have not written the answer yet uh, those who, we, though we discussed this already if you not written the answers yet you can just use the same pdf okay so i think uh, if you have no questions to ask we'll go on to the next chapter since we do have some time uh, let's just go on to the next chapter so in the next chapter we'll be learning about the basics of php i uh, will be learning why uh, php has this structure so in the previous class we have created some php programs also so we have created some uh, we know how html works and we know how uh, html has several limitations and these limitations are overcome by php Uh, we learn why php is designed the way it is in chapter 2 uh, we will learn about uh, various functions uh, in that are available in uh, php and then we learn how to do some operations like uh, addition subtraction multiplication uh, we will just learn to do some operations in php okay so operations that are not possible in html or possible in php we will just do some of those operations uh we'll see what are all uh, the different types of values you can interact and manipulate with in php uh it's given here i will see what are all the different operations you can do uh, we'll learn that here and next we'll see about conditions so whenever you have uh this uh, any web page so what's happening in that web page is you are given lots and lots of choices and depending upon what choice you make uh the browser will output that specific content so that is all possible because of conditions so whenever you use conditions the php program is actually making decisions for you so we learn how to create decisions ourselves in this chapter all right so uh, very simple so let me just uh, get rid of all this so uh, let's just start with uh, the page number 15 on page number 15 we have the basic architecture architecture of a php web application so here we have a simple uh, flow chart you can see one sample web page given here this is uh, facebook so let's see what are all the steps that are happening whenever you open facebook so it's like a continuous loop so let's say open facebook and what happens is uh, 
the second you click on the facebook link you will send a request to facebook.com and facebook.com will send all the contents of the website through the facebook server on to you all right and uh, what happens is uh, once your once the facebook page loads you have lots and lots of buttons you can click you can watch videos photos or you can like share you can do all, all of those things so depending upon what action you perform okay depending upon what action you perform more content is requested or uh, the uh, content will be played on your uh, browser itself okay so this is what happens inside a web page anytime you click on uh, the search button what happens is more content is requested so it will be redirected to a new web page so if we simply click on a picture what will happen is the picture will simply load on the existing web page so these are all the things that actually happen uh, the important thing that we take away is uh, what is the job of the php php script so if you click on something like the search bar php uh, will make a decision based on, based on what you are uh, searching for so if you go to the search bar and if you type cat then php will uh, make that cat as a search term and it will uh, alter all the web searches based on the word cat okay but if you don't uh, make any of those decisions uh, you'll simply uh, stay in the html output okay so it's a very uh, simple concept so we can see uh, other diagrams that explain the job of php so anytime you open a website you will send a request uh, the request will be something like send the website okay uh, it's more complicated but i'm just simplifying it so uh, anytime you click on the website link you will say send website uh, to the actual web server and the web server will respond with the html code okay and the html code will have php embedded inside and based on what action you take uh, this php will fetch that in information for you and it will be displayed on your monitor okay so this php is part of the web server okay actually this uh, send website is on this side so uh, do you have any questions here excuse me sir yes sir if i am searching for more cat videos sir i used to get a videos in a home page sir so does it means that cookies is used in such cases yes. sir yes 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 of course so what will happen is uh, your uh, websites what they'll do is let me just open a website let me show you what let me get a website one second so let me open a website like this uh, amazon so whenever you open amazon what happens is amazon's objective is to sell you things so whenever you type something in the search box okay let me type something like uh, h if i simply type in h you can see some items come up first and then uh, other items come up so even though uh, this uh, h a is the alphabetical sequence it is actually showing me headphones first that is because i've already searched for headphones in amazon.com so it is showing me this first so whenever i search for something if i see headphones first i'll remember that i've already searched for this and i should buy this okay that is the logic behind amazon storing all of this information so what they do is whenever you use the search bar or whenever you watch videos or do something all of that uh, information is stored in cookies you can actually see the cookies by clicking on this uh, lock symbol here if you click on the lock symbol you can see uh, a separate tab it shows me all the cookies that are in use so these cookies will basically store all the activity that i'm doing on the website in my own browser okay so what i'm whatever i'm searching for in amazon is actually stored inside my own browser it is not stored in amazon.com but inside my own browser so mostly it will have some preference settings okay so uh, something like uh, if you go to some commercial site like amazon so some of us we indians we prefer to uh, transact in rupees but if some foreigner uses this they will want to use uh, dollars so this sort of preference settings and everything will be stored as cookies uh inside the browser okay so the next time you open this uh, it will actually show you related related information so based on whatever cookies you have any time you request the content the cookies are also sent along with the request so based on what cookies you have your content will be tailor made for you okay uh, does that answer your question
Yes, sir. If you keep watching cat videos, then uh, this YouTube will decide that this person only watches cat videos. So send them more unique cat videos. So that is what they do. So they have something called as an algorithm that they write using scripting code, and that algorithm will find unique uh, videos to uh, show you. Okay. So let's just uh, go on ahead. So this is how PHP works. PHP simply uh, uh, simply makes your uh, web page more interactive. Whatever decisions you make, all of those are actually uh, whatever you do. All of the decisions are made by PHP. So you can create a PHP file without any HTML tag. So those uh, PHP files that do not use any P uh, HTML tags are what we call as pure PHP files. So uh, the opposite of pure PHP files is embedded PHP files. So in embedded PHP files, what will happen is we have some base HTML code. And inside those HTML code, we'll add our PHP code. So this is what we mean by embedded PHP. And uh, pure PHP files will use only PHP. They don't use HTML at all. OK? So I think we've learned how to create uh, pure PHP files in the previous class. I think we've uh, just used this uh, PHP code play app. Let me just bring it up. So here we go. We have a PHP code play app. And if we just simply click on this HTML this PHP. Is the Ganges. OK, let this ad go away. All right. So uh, this is what we uh, used in the last class. So here you can see an embedded code. So in this embedded code, we can actually see some HTML elements. And inside this HTML elements, we have our PHP code. So whenever we click on output, you can see uh, several texts. So the first text is from the HTML code, and the second is from PHP. So it works uh, uh, flawlessly. So wh whatever text you have inside your uh, PHP code also can add formatting, but you'll have to add additional steps. So whenever you have this uh, sort of code, what happens is this PHP code is actually converted as HTML element, and then it is actually printed on the browser. OK? So if you look at some source code, if you look at some code from the uh, any uh, commercial website, uh, sometimes you may not find any uh, PHP elements. That is because uh, these PHP elements will be converted to HTML when they're actually sent to you. So uh, lots of complicated stuff going on. But uh, what we need to understand is this PHP can work inside HTML, and it can work without HTML also. So let me just uh, delete this text and show you. So here we go. I have no HTML code now. And if I click on output, you can see, uh, you can still see the output. So PHP is flexible. It works with both uh, HTML along with HTML code and without HTML code also. All right. Uh, next, the syntax. So HTML has several rules that has to be followed if you want your code to execute successfully. So whenever you write some uh, some text in english so you have to follow grammar okay so you have to follow this uh, grammar so similarly whenever you're writing uh, cs code any sort of cs code you'll have to follow syntax so without grammar you can't have a proper sentence and without syntax you can't have proper code so depending upon what kind of language you're writing each kind of language is going to have its own syntax so programming languages are going to have their own unique syntax. OK, so some programming languages like C++, they have unique syntax. And this Python, which is different, it also has its unique syntax. Similarly, scripting languages also have unique syntax. We need to learn uh, what uh, syntax each one of these languages have. Only then we'll be able to use it. So scripting languages means something like PHP and something like JavaScript. These are all uh, scripting languages. Okay, let me recite it again. JavaScript. Okay. All right. So the basic syntax of PHP. 
So let me just uh, show you once again. So the basic syntax of PHP is we have the start term. Let me get rid of this once again. So uh, all PHP codes start with this uh, simple statement, this open bracket question mark. So this open bracket signifies that this is a tag. This open bracket uh, syntax is part of HTML. So whenever you write any sort of uh, whenever you describe any sort of tag in html you'll always use this open bracket and you'll write this uh, uh, element name then you'll write uh, close bracket so this signifies that this is in fact a tag so this p tag refers to paragraph tags and the slash p refers to uh, the end tag the end paragraph tag start paragraph tag and end paragraph tag Similarly, this uh, PHP uh, is also just a tag. So it also starts with this uh, open angle brackets. Next, we have the question mark PHP. So this question mark PHP is the element name. Just like uh, this P is used to identify this tag as a paragraph, this question mark PHP is used to identify uh, this tag as a PHP code. So this is the syntax for all PHP code. And uh, whenever you have uh, any tag, that tag is going to be accompanied uh, by another tag. Uh, so uh, this p tag uh, is always accompanied by the slash p tag. OK. So this p tag is always accompanied by this uh, slash p tag. but. Uh, Okay, this is annoying. So the speed tag always comes with this uh, slash p tag. So uh, this is what hap actually happens in HTML. Uh, but in, uh, in case of this PHP tag, it is actually a standalone tag. So here you can see this PHP tag has an open bracket and close bracket in the same line. I can see we don't have uh, an uh, accompanying tag for this uh, PHP. So this is the syntax. So at the start of every PHP code, we write open bracket question mark PHP. And at the end, we say question mark uh, close brackets. So we, of course, we use angle brackets because we are still using HTML. And uh, we can have multiple statements inside this PHP tag. So that is one advantage over uh, other tags in HTML. So if you have something like if you want to uh, create a, a heading uh, in HTML, what you'll do is you'll just say h1, and then you'll say some uh, heading text. And you'll say something like slash h1. Uh, and if you want to go for another paragraph, then you'll say open bracket uh, paragraph, and you'll type your paragraph text, para. And you'll say end paragraph. So every time uh, you want to open a heading or paragraph, you'll just specify what kind of tag you want. So inside PHP, you don't have to do that. You can separate all of these statements, any statement you have, just by using a semicolon. So here, each and every uh, set of elements are uh, separated by using these tags. But inside the PHP, uh, the uh, syntax is completely different. So HTML has its own syntax, but PHP has its own syntax. Once you go inside the PHP code, you just follow different syntax. So you can use several functions. So there are functions like print and echo. So these functions will have basically one job. And the job is to uh, push text onto the screen. So whenever you say echo, what will happen is any text, any text or elements that uh, follow echo will be pushed to your display. OK, so that is the job of this echo. So let me show you how print also works. So uh, you have something called the print function. Its job is to actually push text uh, onto the display. Okay, let's just see why we actually need such. Uh, uh, actually, I think we've seen this already. One second, let me just check. Okay, I think we've discussed this already. So we discussed the need of the syntax in the first. Uh, uh, in the first chapter itself. 
so if you want to write any sort of text uh, so if you want to uh, convey any sort of instruction you want to the computer if you simply write it in plain english it's uh, simply confusing to the browser but if you use a proper syntax like this the browser will not get confused so that is why we have all of this syntax okay so this is just the continuation of uh, what we already seen in chapter 1 here we were okay uh, actually let me just uh, stop after this and all of you can actually start uh, trying this on your own so we have functions like uh, echo and print which will actually uh, push text onto the screen so there are different things you can actually use uh, with echo and print uh, let me just show you so we say Here, here I'm saying. Uh, here I'm just creating two sentences. I'm just creating two sentences. One is uh, echo, and the other is print. So if I click output here, you can actually see uh, the heading text is from uh, HTML part of the program, and this para and this from uh, PHP code and high text are from PHP. So here you can actually see uh, this uh, head. Uh, HTML. Sir, can you show the sir? Can you show the code again, sir? I'll show you the code once again. Okay, let me just uh, show you the functionality. Uh, so, what is actually happening yes, is uh, whenever you are typing any code, what happens is uh, let it be PHP or HTML. It will get converted as tags. Only then those tags will be displayed to the browser. Okay. So, whatever text you have, it will be made as a paragraph. Then it is actually shown in the output. so here you can see this normal uh, php code text it is actually very small and you can see the heading text from html is very big so this is one drawback of uh, php where you can't actually print h uh, print big text so if you want to print big text what you can do is you can include this uh, html tags inside your uh, functions let's say i want to make this uh, high text as a heading what i can do is i can just include Uh, let me just try let's see if this actually works in php code play you can just include this h1 tag inside this print statement so if i in, in, include this what's going to happen is anyway whatever function uh, whatever we have inside this uh, statement will be converted as html tags so what i'm doing is i'm just including one more h1 tag on top of this uh, normal text so let's just see what happens so if i uh, click on output now here you can actually see i'm printing a heading straight from php okay so it, how you can now see how php even though if it uh, stands alone it is uh, somewhat very powerful okay so uh, let me just go back to code once again and uh, okay let's let me just uh, scroll past this uh, scroll past everything and uh, let me explain excuse me sir yes sir echo and print is same meaning only now sir does it yes, mean it sir, echo or echo or print have any other unique property sir so uh, what happened is uh, uh, this echo is actually used in very old uh, programming languages in very old programming languages sorry in very old computers uh, what actually happened was uh, those computers uh, Uh, didn't actually have uh, what do you say uh, graphical user interface like uh, what we have now what you are seeing on the screen is what you call as a graphical user interface so if i want to change the pen color i can just go click on this icon and i can change the pen color but in the olden days uh, we did not have uh, let me get rid of this okay let be in the olden days we did not have all of this uh, buttons so in those days they only had this command line interface so this is what they used to have in the olden days so whenever they wanted to uh, look at some data okay look at some uh, detail they'll use this command called echo so echo was first used to simply look up information so echo i think everyone knows the meaning of echo in the real world so if you uh, echo means simply a reverberation so it'll just uh, reflect back 
so echo means the same thing echo means to reflect content back so if you want something like a host name of this computer you can say echo host name and it'll just simply uh, respond back so echo will simply let me say something like right so echo will simply return whatever i type this is the use of echo okay is everyone able to see yes sir okay this is the use of echo so i can say echo followed by whatever name i want something like joke but if i type uh, any sort of uh, letters any sort of uh, um, words without using the echo keyword what happens is it will say it will give me an error it says it's not recognized so the job of this echo is simply to reflect whatever is sent so let's say i say echo hi i am a computer here what the computer is doing is the computer is not actually speaking to us but it's just reflecting whatever text that follows that is the same uh, case here wherever you have echo the computer is simply reflecting whatever is uh, whatever follows on the screen okay so that is what we mean by echo print also does the same thing but uh, print is also doing the same thing in olden days they had only uh, this uh, command prompt so they could uh, interact only in this command prompt they used to use echo but nowadays we just use print so print means to directly throw some content on the screen so both can be used interchangeably it doesn't matter so some some older programmers like using echo uh, but you can use echo or print uh, both have the same functionality uh, both are the same both are going to display content on the screen okay is that uh, is that clear <laughs> Yes, sir. Okay then. So uh, there is one more thing we have to note uh, that is uh, unique to this uh, PHP code. Let me scroll. So here you can see after every single line, uh, we can actually see a semicolon. So the semicolon is like a full stop for every single uh, uh, sentence you type or sentence you write. You are going to include a full stop to indicate that the sentence is over. Similarly, at the end of every uh, uh, statement in PHP, we need to end it with a semicolon. So, if we don't include a semicolon, what will happen is the uh, PHP will think this is a continuation. If there is no semicolon, it will just continue all the statements, and that that will uh, lead to disaster. So, uh, let's just see. Sometimes it may work. Sometimes it may not work. So, in some cases, uh, if we uh, forget the semicolon. the code may work but in others it may not work so uh, this uh, scripting language is not a compiled language if it uh, by not compiled what we mean is all the code will be executed at the output screen and not before it so sometimes it may give us an output sometimes it may give us nothing okay so here you can see okay this is an i'm going to switch apps now uh, i'm going to use a different app Uh, something called uh, learn php so let me just uh, go here so i have one statement one print uh, print statement here that says hi i am text and i have one more print sta one more uh, print statement here it says class uh, 8 okay so we are missing a semicolon here let me add semicolon to both uh, these text now let me click on output so in the output screen you can actually see uh, hi i am text and class 8 as the output but uh, now let's see what happens if i click uh, forget the semicolon okay so you can actually see uh, it says syntax error unexpected print so what is actually happening is uh, this is what php is seeing if there is no semicolon this is actually what uh, php is seeing it is seeing two print statements so we cannot have two print statement it uh, doesn't make any sense okay so if you have a semicolon it means this is one complete print statement and the other is a uh, completely unique print statement so i have just added one semicolon now and let me click on output here you can actually see the code works okay so what is actually happening is since this next print statement is at the end of the uh, 
PHP code, there is nothing following this print statement. So it still works. Even though this uh, code is incorrect, we are still getting an output. So you can see how this uh, semicolon is important. Even though we may make some mistakes uh, before, uh, even though, even though we, we may miss some uh, uh, syntax, the program still works. That is because this PHP is not a pre-compiled language. Okay. I think we'll stop here. Uh, we'll try to uh, I'll try to give you some exercises, and all of you can simply try the exercises. Okay, let's just uh, see if we have some exercises we can try. Okay, so shall we create this program right here on page number eighteen? Yes, sir. Okay. We can create. Okay, so all of you can use this uh, Learn PHP app, or you can use that PHP code play. So all you need to do is uh, create uh, these four lines. So the first line, PHP echo statement, is a heading. So whenever you're typing that, you need to use this H1 tag. H1 tag before your text and slash H1 tag after your text. OK? Uh, and once you complete your sentence, you need to actually add this line break. So to add line break, you can use this br tag. Okay. So let me just demonstrate once. So let me demonstrate without the line break tag. If you look at the output, you can see we are having a heading and uh, we are adding an enter key. That's because of this h1 tag. So if you want, uh, if you want to add more text, You can simply use this br. Okay, so this is line three. If I want to go to the next line, I simply add this br tag. Then I say line four. Okay. So let's see the output. We, we have one heading and three lines of text. Okay. So everyone, you can just try creating this output. I'll just wait here. If you have any questions, just share your screen and we'll start rectifying. So just you can just start coding right now. I just use this uh, simple text uh, given on page number eighteen. You can see the code also is given uh, on the bottom. You can either use the same code or you can write your own code. It doesn't matter. You can use whatever heading you want. Use whatever text you want. Uh, but just show me the output. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an assignment in Google Classroom. And all of you can just uh, post screenshots of your work in this uh, Google Classroom assignment. So we'll just uh, have a record of uh, who's actually submitting and who's not submitting. All right, so I've created the assignment in Google Classroom. So all of you can just uh, create your uh, simple PHP program using the uh, desktop app, uh, sorry, using the uh, Windows desktop, or you can use your Android phone. You can just use this app called PHP Codeplay, and you can create this text. So try to upload both the text and the output screen. So you can just, uh, uh, so the text means uh, you can just upload the code, take a screenshot of the code, upload the same, and take one more screenshot of the output and upload the same. So uh, we'll try to use this for your uh, upcoming, uh, maybe not upcoming, uh, maybe we'll just try to use this for internal. Sir, so we should do the code in page number 18, yes. sir. Try the code on page number 18. Just uh, We just want multiple uh, 
lines to be printed on the screen so usually we'll print yes, only sir. one line so this time try printing multiple <laughs> lines one of the lines should be a heading that's all yes sir okay, okay. Try any other own, our own, uh, yes, you can try. You can try. The only limitation is have one heading and three lines. Okay, you can type whatever text you want, okay. but uh, the first line should be a heading. That's all. Sure. Sir. Yes. Yes. Go on. Can you say that? Uh, uh, Classroom code, sir. Classroom code. Uh, one second. Okay, one second. Uh, I'll tell you the code. Which classroom are you in? Sir, eight A, sir. Sir, I have joined, sir, but I want to change that uh, Gmail alone, sir. Okay. Okay. So uh, let me just uh, paste the eight year code in the chat box. Okay, here you go. I pasted the code. Uh, the others try try the program now. Um, still available till one o'clock. So if you have some questions you want to ask, you can just ask your questions. Okay, if you have any doubts, if something is not clear, just uh, you can just ask your questions now. Yes. Sir, I did classroom code, sir. Which classroom? Eight B, sir. Okay, just wait. Let me give you the code. Okay, the code is in your chat box. So whenever you're coding, don't forget the syntax. So immediately after echo, we'll have to type our double quotes. Okay, so do not type two single quotes. This is actually a double quotes. So if you look at your uh, keyboard, you'll actually find, sorry. Let me just show you on the screen. If you look at your keyboard, you'll actually find your uh, single quote key and double quote key. So these single quotes and double quotes are uh, completely different. Do not use two single quotes. Just use shift and press on the single quote key to get this double quote symbol. All right. Let me just demonstrate quickly. So this is one error uh, commonly made by first time programmers. So this is two single quotes and this is a single double quote. So you can actually see the difference between, uh, I can see the difference between them. Okay, then everyone, I think uh, this is enough for today. So the attendance is in uh, Google Classroom. You can just simply go to Google Classroom and you can click present and you can post your attendance for today's class. And I expect all of you to complete this simple program. You can see both the code and the output given on page number 18. Refer the same and create your own program. Therefore, the same, uh, create your own program and upload it to Google Classroom okay. for our reference. So uh, next time you have internal assessment, we'll just use that uh, code you submitted. We'll have, we'll try to have more and more uh, uh, programs from next class. So since this is just an introduction to uh, the syntax for uh, PHP, uh, we just had a simple program. Uh, but from the next class, we'll try to have more. The next class we'll be seeing about uh, some containers that hold values called uh, variables. Okay, sir. This is an extremely important concept. I want to take my time, so let's see this in the in the next class. Okay. So, does anyone have any questions you want to ask? Okay, any questions? sir. Okay then. No, so sir. All of you, you can actually start disconnecting.